Hi there, now let's do lesson 15. My thoughts are images that I have made. Paragraph one. It is because the thoughts you think, you think appear as images that you do not recognize them as nothing. You think you think them, and so you think you see them. This is how your seeing was made. This is the function you have given your body's eyes. It is not seeing, it is image making. It takes the place of seeing, replacing, replacing vision with illusion. So this is, this is part of the reversal that the Course in Miracles is inviting us into. We need to reverse the ideas, the beliefs that we have one of the big reversals is that we need to be willing to acknowledge that we can change our mind about anything. We can choose to believe whatever it is that we want to believe. And we need to be very clear that our thoughts are changeable. And as we change our thoughts, we will change our experience. One of the thoughts that we need to change is that what is out there is something that is real and that we see it. We need to get comfortable with the idea that we are projecting an image. So what we are seeing out there is the result of what we are believing in here. Paragraph two, this introductory idea to the process of image making that you call seeing will not have much meaning for you. You will begin to understand it when you have seen little edges of light around the same familiar objects which you see now. That is the beginning of real vision. You can be certain that real vision will come quickly when this has occurred. I remember when I began to see lights around things, uh, this quite a few years ago, it startled me. I even went to my eye doctor to see what was happening. Why was it that there was circles of lights around things that I was seeing? Not having studied A Course in Miracles then, of course, this, this is quite a while ago, probably like 10 years ago, I began to realize that something was happening and that has continued to happen because I have been training myself to see what God sees, not what Lina's ego wants to see. So when I look at people, I see their essence, I see their light, I see their brilliance, which is why Whatever somebody says, I don't take it personally because I, I can see their light and I can hear their ego and their ego is not what I am focused on. So I'm well practiced at that. But the beginning of it was when I was having these little light flickerings around things and Jesus is telling us that that's the beginning of something that will happen. If you've already had those experiences and didn't know what it was, now you understand if you haven't had those experiences yet, it will come with the commitment to see what is really there and not to be observing images that are being projected out of your own mind. Paragraph three, as we go along, you may have many light episodes. They may take many different forms, some of them quite unexpected. Do not be afraid of them. They are signs that you are opening your eyes at last. They will not persist because they merely symbolize true perception and they are not related to knowledge. These exercises will not reveal knowledge to you, but they will prepare the way for it. So what is happening is we are being trained to see what is not real, what is an image, and then the knowledge of God will come after we are well trained to look for the, the knowledge, to look for what is true, to look for what is real. But for now, we're only in lesson 15 of 365. And we, we're create, establishing a base of what is coming. And that the first step is to understand that we have created a meaningless world because we have overlaid a meaning, which means we have projected an image of what we want to see. And now we're beginning to understand that when you begin to see light is, be, is because your third eye is being activated. You're seeing with the Christ in you is seeing, not the ego in you perceiving. So it's two big, big different um, things that we need to get clear about. Paragraph four. In practicing the idea for today, repeat it first to yourself and then apply it to whatever you see around you. 
using its name and letting your eyes rest on it as you say, this blank is an image that I have made. This camera is an image that I have made. This lamp is an image that I have made. This wall is an image that I have made. This counter is an image that I have made. So I'm just acknowledging that what I am seeing appearing as real, material, physical, is an image that I have made to have this experience. Now, I am practiced at knowing that that is not real, it's not solid, it appears solid. So I'm playing that this is my home and it's housing me, but I know that I'm in the mind of God. So for me, I can see all of these things and nothing has a charge and nothing is really real because I'm seeing from the deeper part of me that is acknowledging the world that I have overlaid on, the, on what God has created. And God has created something beautiful for us to experience, but we can't experience it. We're not aware of that because we are perceiving the image that we have um, overlaid on it, which comes from our, our past, our beliefs, our training, what we have received from the world that we are trained into believing is the real world. So let's continue with paragraph four, sentence four. It is not necessary to include a large number of specific subjects for the application of today's idea. It is necessary, however, to continue to look at each subject while you repeat the idea to yourself. The idea should be repeated quite slowly each time. Paragraph five. Although you will obviously not be able to apply the idea to very many things during the minute or so of practice that is recommended, try to make the selection as random as possible. In other words, don't be selective because your egos only want to select certain things as, as images um, and not others. Sentence number two, less than a minute will do for the practice periods. If you begin to feel uneasy, so don't overdo this, do not have more than three application periods for today's ideas unless you feel completely comfortable with it, and do not exceed four. However, the idea can be applied as needed throughout the day. So you take your time managing what feels comfortable for you while you are being trained to look at things quite differently while you are being trained to know that you can change your mind about anything that you, that you wish to change your mind. Only your ego will resist a changing of your mind because that implies that what you were believing before is true is somehow now not so solid, not so true. And the ego does not want to be wrong. It always wants to be right about what it has been believing is true. But again, we're on lesson 15 of a course that is going to take an entire year to train our mind to see through the eyes of Christ within us, to see the, the world, the earth that God has created, and we can begin to remove what we have overlaid on it, remove the filters that cloud our perception so that instead of seeing images that our ego is projecting, we will begin to see the reality that God has created. Thanks a bunch and I'll see you in the next lesson.